everyone dies. And when it's our time to go, some of us will be embalmed, buried, some cremated. But there's a place where our bodies still tell stories long after death. Yes, we have a lot of dead bodies out there. You have these two fences, you have the privacy fence and then the chain link with a razor wire on top to keep people out. So when you first walk in, you're on a nice gravel pathway and then your focus shifts. As soon as you start looking a little to the left and to the right and the gravel pathway continues, you start seeing black plastic on the ground and you realize underneath that black plastic is where we have placed the donors. The Forensic Anthropology Center in Knoxville, Tennessee, has been the final resting place for thousands over the last 40 years. Who in their right mind would want to go to a body farm? Isn't it kind of morbid? I don't think so. I think it's educational, and I think it's something that, for me, I, I, I'm fascinated with the study, uh, with anthropology, with the odontology, uh, and all the things that we've been speaking about. So. Uh, I was the one who put that forth, and no, I don't think it's morbid at all. Doc, you got any feelings on that? Well, the deal is that there's a lot of individuals that are interested in this process, law enforcement primarily, because it answers, you know, answers the question, not all decedents, not all victims are fresh remains. That if there's time between death and, you know, discovery, you know, soft tissue changes, and in order to understand that, in order to give resolution, identification, um, so that family members can move on with their life and settle up with a grieving process, we need to know what happened. So it's not for everybody uh, who ever asked that question. Uh, obviously, it doesn't make any sense to you, but still in all, uh, there's a lot of people that want to know what, what happened, or what takes place, and so uh, we're lucky to really have these things. This interesting sort of juxtaposition where you feel like you're going for a walk in the woods. There's these trails and there's trees and it's a really nice scenery, but there are various burials or surface remains around you. People have these pictures of, you know, it being horribly smelly and just being awful and it's not. You're just out in the woods. You can be standing right next to one that's decomposing and not smell it. Or you can be standing 10 feet away and really smell it. We have typically between about 150 and 200 donors who are out of the facility at any one particular time. Some bodies are exposed to Mother Nature, weather, temperature, and insects all play an important role in the progression of decay. We are out there doing research, doing science uh, to learn more about the human condition. Decomposition is, is all part of the process of life and death. What education is required to become an anthropologist? A lot of desire. You go through undergraduate years uh, and you major in anthropology, and then you have to do a graduate program. Uh, you can do a master's, PhD. Uh, there's quite a few master's level forensic anthropologists out there. Uh, and they have a qualifying examination in the American Board of Forensic Anthropology, the same way that the doctoral components do as well. So take four years of college and then at least two years uh, of graduate work. So it's a, it's a lot of uh, dedication. You got to really want to do that. And a real important piece, of course, is to have a mentor in law enforcement and a medical examiner so that you find out what's going on at the scene and how all this stuff fits together. So both at the crime scene with the medical examiner and then if you have to go to court, and that's a whole other program we could talk about. Being yes. responsible for it, the jury, talking about resolution for families. How do you hold up a skull of a victim? You know, looking at a jury is one thing, but when the parents of that victim are sitting there in the courtroom, and you have the skull of their daughter or son explaining things, it's quite a humbling experience. Where have you traveled to work in the field in anthropology? My work has been uh, Central America, did some human rights work in Panama and then in Australia. Uh, most of it has been, uh, of course, U.S.-based, uh, but d again, did work in Australia uh, with my friend Ian, um, actually is a visiting professor over there, uh, and then the human rights work in, in Central America. So when you die, if you donated your body, what's the process? How does the body get uh, to the body farm? Well, there, well, there's several avenues. It d depends on where people are. Um, if someone wants to email me, they can do that. I'll be glad to answer because I know the forensic anthropologists that have those facilities, you know, as far as Texas, North Carolina, um, these different areas, 
a lot of my colleagues have, you know, small operations that are going on. So it depends on where this person is. Uh, but I just have paperwork they sign and there's a witness and, and that's pretty much it. So it's very straightforward. Again, does that family need a death certificate? You know, and that's another layer that has to be taken care of. So there's a formality to it. Do they have to bear the expense of getting the body to, to your body farm? It depends on where they are. Now, in Tennessee, Georgia, places nearby, you know, there's no expense at all. Um, it depends on the medical examiner. It depends on if there's uh, transfer availability. But then again, if you're going to cross state lines and go several places, then that might be more complex. It's dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. No one is making any money off such a, such a thing like this. It's a donation to science. A lot of fresh remains go to dentistry or medicine or something like that. If there's any decomposition, of course, that's what we're interested in having. So, Can you donate organs, then have the body donated? Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that, that can definitely take place. Um, a lot of times the bodies have gone through uh, organ donation services, whether the eyes, uh, bone, is taken quite a bit of the time. So there are several times when we don't get a whole bunch because of ribs and long bones taken. Uh, but, but definitely organs yeah, can be taken out because we pretty much don't do anything with those except allow them to decompose to understand processes. So I can do the families get the remains back, the bones, if they want it, uh, of their loved one? Absolutely. I mean, they're on, they're on loan for us to study. But at any point in time, if someone wants to know what's happening, I mean, I've talked to probably a handful of people who want to know, did anybody come and study my loved one? Did anyone come and look at uh, the skull or the long bones or anything else? What did someone learn from looking at the bones of my loved one? So uh, I talked to several people that, uh, you know, check in routinely on that. Um, there's been several where Uncle Jack shows up and said, well, I'd have buried her, you know, and the family went ahead and rushed, you know, without consoling with me. So there's all sorts of different uh, avenues where the bones are returned to family. Now, we don't own them. They're, they're given to us so that we can learn something. But every family has a different type of a grieving process and acceptance. So we, you know, abide by that. And I can't send a, a box of bones to a family. You know, they have to tell me what funeral home. I'll send the bones to that funeral home. And then the family can decide they want to cremate or bury or something like that. You know, or, or I can have that done here and then send them the remains. Besides the indigenous wildlife that come when, um, to uh, nibble on the bodies, do you do any studies where you actually expose the body to an animal like a pig or so forth to see uh, what they would do? No, we haven't done any of that. Um, I'm pretty sure that the uh, Forensic Anthropology Center uh, over at UT hasn't done that, but I'm not really sure exactly. Just want to keep everything where the body is complete. We don't dissect parts off, we let the body decompose and all the bones are together. So that if family someday wants, you know, wants their remains, you know, they get all of them. You know? There's not fingers or toes in some carnivore's gut somewhere or, you know, something else like that. Um, now, there's been studies with pigs looking at, um, you know, other critters, you know, like cats or dogs or deer, you know, roadkill, that type of a thing. Do they give tours at the body farm? Ooh. Uh, well, at, at mine I do. Uh, I, I've, I've taken people out there that are interested and, and you know, I'll do that and, and you know, for an educational purpose. not. There's no pictures taken, there's none of that type of thing, but there's people interested in this process and it's an educational facility. Um, we honor and respect uh, the families and of course the individuals that are donated. And you know, to that end, you know, keep things on the, on the professional level. I mean, like again, no pictures, no parties, none of that kind of stuff. But you know, a lot of times I'll give a lecture first and then if they wanna go through there, you can just see all the hundreds of people who made that altruistic gift to give their bodies to the advancement of science and forensic science. People think it's a spooky place, but I actually think it's a place that's just full of hope and it's very peaceful. A peaceful place that is also quite busy. Not a day goes by that someone isn't at the body farm. It's not a place you can go visit unless you're one of the many coroners, detectives, and investigators who travel from all over the world to gain valuable skills in crime scene investigation. I talked to probably a handful of people who want to know, did anybody come and study my loved one? Did anyone come and look at uh, the skull or the long bones or anything else? What did someone learn from looking at the bones of my loved one? So uh, I talked to several people that, uh, 
check in routinely on that. Um, I'm really proud of our training program. We have students who are law enforcement and have lots of experience under their belts and other students who, who have never seen you know, a deceased individual before. We are able to modify our courses to really match their experience and comfort level. On this day, it's a group of experts from south of the border. We have crime scene investigators, anthropologists, archaeologists, individuals who work in the kidnapping units in Mexico, and they're working on a burial. They need to find it, excavate it, document it. So my team right now is working on troweling away at the dirt and screening it, hopefully encounter some human remains. What they learn on their visit will be crucial to helping solve crimes in Mexico. The thing is, it's an educational thing. And, and, and the more open we are, the more transparent we are with the public, with my colleagues in law enforcement, my colleagues in forensic anthropology, dentistry and pathology, then all of this makes more sense. Thing that, that the facility has done for, for investigators is exposing investigators to that environment and helping us to see it in real time allows us to deal with the challenges that we face every day. The body farm is not a place of sensationalism and we don't place our donors out for you know grotesque displays. Uh, we have the utmost respect for our donors. They can understand how this research helps people. That brings a sense of community and pride to what we do.